Mr. President, I rise this evening to address the trial of Donald John Trump. The founders gave this body the sole power to try all impeachments. And exercising that power, we all know, is a weighty, weighty responsibility. This was only the third time in the history of our country that the Senate convened to handle a presidential impeachment, and only the second in the past 150 years. I was part of a, of a small group that worked to secure a fair and honest and a transparent structure for the trial. And we based it on how this chamber handled the trial of President Clinton some 20 years ago. So there were 24 hours of arguments for each side, 16 hours of questions from members, with the full House record admitted as evidence. That should have been more than enough to answer the questions. Do we need to hear more? Should there be additional process? But Mr. President, the structure we built should have been sufficient. But the foundation upon which it rested was rotted. The House rushed through what should have been one of the most serious, consequential undertakings of the legislative branch, simply to meet an artificial, self-imposed deadline. Prior presidential impeachments resulted from years of investigation, where subpoenas were issued and they were litigated, where there were massive amounts of documents that were produced and witnesses deposed, where resistance from the executive was overcome through court proceedings and through accommodations. The House failed in its responsibilities. The House failed in its responsibilities. And the Senate, the Senate should be ashamed by the rank partisanship that has been on display here. We cannot be the greatest deliberative body when we kick things off by issuing letters to the media instead of coming together to set the parameters of the trial and negotiate in good faith on how we should proceed. And for all the talk of impartiality, it is clear to me that few in this chamber approach this with a genuinely open mind. Some, some have been calling for the president to be impeached for years. Indeed, we saw just today clips that indicate headlines 19 minutes after the president was sworn into office calling for his impeachment. Others, others in this chamber saw little need to even consider the arguments from the House before stating their intentions to acquit. Over the course of the past few weeks, we've all seen the videos from 20 years ago where members who were present during the Clinton trial took the exact opposite stance than they take today. That level of hypocrisy is astounding, even for a place like Washington, D.C. The president's behavior was shameful and wrong. His personal interests do not take precedence over those of this great nation. The president has the responsibility to uphold the integrity and the honor of the office, not just for himself, but for all future presidents. Degrading the office by actions or even name calling weakens it for future presidents and it weakens our country. All of this rotted foundation of the process, all of this led to the conclusion that I reached several days ago that there would be no fair trial. 
while this trial was held here in this Senate. It was really litigated in the court of public opinion. For half the country, they'd already decided there had been far too much process. They considered the entire impeachment inquiry to be baseless, and they thought that the Senate should have just dismissed the case as soon as it reached us. And then for the other half, no matter how many witnesses were summoned or deposed, no matter how many documents were produced, the only way, the only way the trial could have been considered fair was it if it resulted in the president's removal from office. During the month that the House declined to transmit the articles to the Senate, the demon of faction extended his scepter. The outcome became clear. And a careless media cheerfully tried to put out the fires with gasoline. We debated witnesses instead of the case before the Senate. Rather than the president's conduct, the focus turned to how a lack of additional witnesses could be used to undermine any final conclusion. And what started with political initiatives that degraded the office of the president and left the Congress wallowing in partisan mud it threatened to drag the last remaining branch of government down along with us. Now, Mr. President, I've taken tough votes before to uphold the integrity of our courts. And when it became clear that a tie vote here in the Senate would simply be used to burn down our third branch of government for partisan political purposes, I said, enough. Just enough. The response to the President's behavior is not to disenfranchise nearly 63 million Americans and remove him from the ballot. The House could have pursued censure and not immediately jumped to the remedy of last resort. I cannot vote to convict. The Constitution provides for impeachment, but does not demand it in all instances. An incremental first step to remind the President that, as Montesquieu said, political virtue is a renunciation of oneself, and this requires a, quote, continuous preference of the public's interest over one's own. Removal from office and being barred from ever holding another office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States is the political death penalty. The President's name is on ballots that have already been cast. The voters will pronounce a verdict in nine months, and we must trust their judgment. This process has been the apotheosis of the problem of congressional abdication. Through the refusal to exercise war powers, or relinquishing the power of the purse, selective oversight, and an unwillingness to check emergency declarations designed to skirt Congress, we have failed. We have failed time and again. We, as a legislative branch, cannot continue to cede authority to the executive. The question that we must answer given the intense polarization in our country, is where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? And I wish, I wish that I had that magic wand, but sadly I have no definitive answers. But I do have hope, because we must have hope. As I tried to build consensus over the past few weeks, I had I had many private conversations with colleagues, and so many, so many in this chamber share my sadness for the present state of our institutions. It's my hope 
that we finally found bottom here, that both sides can look inward and reflect on the apparent willingness that each has to destroy not just each other, but all of the institutions of our government. And for what? Because it may help win an election? At some point, Mr. President, at some point for our country, winning has to be about more than just winning, or we will all lose. With that, Mr. President, I thank you. I yield the floor.